everybody. Today we are going to ask some questions. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, that's her name. She's not Russian, actually, but she's a brave girl because she lives here and even is going to continue it. So, Oya, first of all, uh, what is your background? Yeah, where you came from, what did you do before you moved to Russia? Uh -huh. uh, I'm born in Brussels. Uh, most of my life I spent, uh, of my lifetime, I spent in Belgium. Um, I'm a student, uh, I was, I studied anthropology and as an anthropology student I traveled a lot. I did a lot of, uh, like I had ethnographic uh, stays in, in, for instance, Kyrgyzstan and so on. And Russia was actually part of that. Uh, so I came to Russia two years ago to study Russian and to do a internship at uh, the anthropology faculty of uh, the Moscow Humanitarian University. Is Russian language uh, difficult for you? Uh, very. Actually, I uh, got a, <laughs> I, I, I got a, a scholarship because they said in Belgium that I had really good, like I was very talented, and I thought, okay, I got this. I'm like I speak French, I speak Dutch, I speak English. I, I got this, and I came to uh, Russia. Initially, I came only for one year, and actually, after two months i i understood that i had to stay i didn't need like a year was not enough i needed 10 at least <laughs> so yeah it's a very difficult language very uh, creative as well uh and uh like there are a bunch of synonyms for just one word and you just have to continue studying new words all the time and the grammar is also very very yeah difficult <laughs> You know the funny thing that uh, some novels of Hemingway that are translated in Russia, uh, they are much more interesting to read than in uh, origin. You know? <laughs> yeah, because Hemingway, well, uh, he wrote very simple, and uh, we have some, you know, um, you know, color of language. Exactly. We, we call it. Okay, so uh, do you live in Moscow? Yes, I live in Moscow. How would you describe Moscow as a city, uh, Moscow people and so on? Uh, first of all, Moscow is really huge. Uh, when friends come over from Belgium and they they have like a week, for instance, to do a city trip in, in, in Moscow, they're like stressing because uh, they... They, they are like, oh my God, like I have three days left and I didn't see half of it. And I'm like, yeah, it's like city tri tripping through all of Belgium, actually. Like, but it's just one city. Uh, it's really the infrastructure is huge. It's big. And I always thought like after like traveling with the Metro daily in Moscow, I thought no city, no capital will ever be good enough for me because the infrastructure, I think, is the best in the world. And it's everything is huge and beautiful and it's it's clean it's safe as well like um, if you go party for instance uh, in the city center at three four in the morning you can walk to your home nobody comes and disturbs you because there is not not such a culture of you know coming and talking to girls for instance in the street whereas I hear for instance from my American friends that this is the case in America and everybody's kind of scared but here you feel super safe actually uh, about the people, in the beginning I thought, oh wow, Russians are rude. Like, that's what we have, right? Russians are cold, they're rude. They uh, don't smile. Exactly, exactly. But then, actually, you're like, after a while, you're like, why would they? Like, why would I smile to strangers? Like, why would I talk? Why would I be nice? They're so right. Yeah, and also what I actually, uh, through experience, I acknowledge that, um, for instance, a Russian person, like, for instance, you go buy your bread. Uh, the first day, they will be very, like, just normal, you know, you buy your bread that's it but the second day or the third day when they recognize you they're like oh i recognize you how are you and like for instance the um, my coffee shop where i daily buy my coffee like uh, next to my house he became like my friend or my psychologist for instance you know where you daily go to and you have a chat and he's giving you like motivations about how life is in moscow and that you shouldn't give up when you know there's a problem or something and like you have actually like these beautiful friendships uh, that come about like but of course not the first day uh, and I think in Europe it's like the other way around people are very nice to you kind they chit chat but there is no friendship coming out of it like exactly exactly yeah uh, I quite agree with you 
about that, but it's quite opposite to the information that um, comes uh, from some newspapers in uh, Europe or in the US. Uh, in the US. Uh, true, and you know what? I think it's also because uh, people want to grasp uh, or they think they understand Russia or the Russian culture without being anchored in, in, in Russia. Like, you cannot understand the La the country and how the dynamism, kind of the dynamics of, of the people, if you are not here, uh, like if you don't, uh, for instance, if you're not, like how do you say it, like uh, if you're not part of a network of people, of locals, for instance, people talk about like, oh, uh, like for instance, uh, I, I all the time I hear like, oh, you cannot tell your, uh, uh, can you actually talk about what you think about, for instance, Putin or the country freely? Uh, won't you go to prison? And it's like, yeah, but do you know all these channels where, you know, people talk about their opinions, for instance, the VK, YouTube, without knowing that, you cannot know the freedom of press or the freedom, freedom of opinion and so on, and the freedom of thought and, and of speech. And these things, I think people just cannot understand it, again, because the language is difficult, because you have to invest a lot of resources, you have to try to, yeah, intellect as well, you have to try to grasp how it all works. And maybe uh, some of barrier between uh, Russia and, I don't know, for instance, Europe, by media mm -hmm. that uh, produce uh, some, you know, well, calamity actually mm -hmm. about country. Absolutely. I also see this, for instance, in academia. Uh, like, uh, I studied anthropology and uh, about, like, I studied about the Soviet Union and so on, for instance. We don't have the books or the, the knowledge that you guys have because it's just not being translated. And I just don't understand why there is not this, um, like, this... this uh, this uh, longing actually to information from the from the locals like okay uh, I got a couple from Brussels and uh, in St. Petersburg I'm actually a guide okay. so uh, they wanted an excursion and uh, when we came to my car and I opened it they were very astonished because my bag was inside oh, yeah. and they asked me a question what is that don't you uh, you don't afraid to leave your belongings inside your car? I asked him back, well, well, what's what's wrong with that? They said that in Brussels, in an hour, only two, your glass, glass of your car would be, would be broken by some stranger and so on. Is it true? True, absolutely. Brussels, definitely. Again, like in Brussels, you can't just go into the metro, for instance, after 10 p.m., you can as a woman you can't it's really it's dangerous uh, or it i don't know yeah it is actually dangerous we have a lot of like uh, a lot of things happen like uh harassment and stuff like that's why i'm saying like in moscow you don't have this whereas it's the other way around people think brussels is very, brussels is very safe and moscow is very dangerous but not at all. Like last week, I had some friends uh, from Brussels here um, who, who traveled, and I hosted them. And they said, "Oh my God, Moscow is there's like it's full of life. Like it, it, it's colorful." And apparently, um, all the movies about Russia and Moscow and stuff, they all use this blue filter to like show that it's all gray and and cold and and uh, you know. And and it's like no, it's actually super. Like winter in Moscow, it's like. I, it's my favorite season in Moscow like even though it's like minus 20 you don't feel it because you know it's so beautiful and every you know like little lights and color is everywhere and I don't know the whole city lights up and uh, yeah so these things really do happen like well it's very interesting because we are talking about stereotypes mm -hmm. I also thought that in Brussels well it's safe and uh, so on and, and uh, I told them back that our thieves even if they get in your car while they opened it, opened it quite, you know, <laughs> gently. They don't break glasses. <laughs> For many years, our thieves are much more cultural. I don't know how to put it. And the second thing is that uh, since we're Russians and we're very strong people, uh -huh. if we got the thief, well, we can beat them up. 
and yeah, and uh, not any police uh, will involve involved in that, and and they know that the thieves. That's why it's very safe to leave your belongings inside a car or the car, well, whatever you like. Okay, uh, let's talk about some other stuff about uh, Moscow and Russia. Well, I've been I've been to Brussels well, for half an of a day, but I've been to Paris very often. So, uh, well, to New York, to Berlin, and so on. And uh, I can say that probably Russia has now the best internet in the world, in, uh, according to I mean. Uh, Wi-Fi, yeah, well, uh, 4G and and so on. Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, I agree uh, in the sense also, like, I'm not really an IT person or a technician, so I don't know what good internet really is. But what I can say is that in Moscow, internet, like, just mobile internet or something, it's very cheap and good. Like, you can get, for instance... 15 gigabyte for like 400 rubles whereas like monthly that's what is that 400 rubles like five euro six euro whereas in belgium you have to pay like minimum 15 euro for like one gigabyte per month and i don't understand like why or how but yeah i think moscow is very much ahead actually of uh, on certain like on, on these uh, and we have free Wi-Fi in in the city, in transport, in metro, and so on. You don't have that kind of stuff in uh, all other big cities in Europe. True. But do you feel like, for instance, I feel like uh, if here as a non-Russian, if you don't have internet, you're done. Like, you're lost. Uh, that's why, like, it's really, I feel good about, like, the fact that there is, like, internet provided everywhere. Do you feel like that as well when you're in, for instance, Berlin or uh, Brussels or Paris? Like, Well, maybe I'm not because I'm an... Uh, very experienced person <laughs> well so i i can't get lost in any big city uh, all since i can speak french for instance okay. but uh, i understand uh, what you what are you talking about so um uh, the next question is uh, if we're going to compare russian girls and well girls from belgium for instance okay. what what are ma- <laughs> yeah well <laughs> what are the major difference between them oh okay this is a difficult one because um let's say like if, if belgian people will watch this video they will be mad at me because you know we have like the uh, flemish speaking part the yeah, french yeah. speaking part so what is belgian but let me say uh, if you compare them, like I will just talk about the stereoty- t- stereotypes. Uh, I think the Russian women are more outgoing than the Belgian ones. Uh, in Belgium, they are quite more, um, more. Uh, how do you say? It? Like they are more careful. Let's say they are more. Um, Stick to your, their home. Exactly. Yeah. Like uh, whereas Russian women are more outgoing, more courageous, and they want to oh. discover as well. Uh, in the beginning, they might seem cold because they have to, you know, they have to know who you are, what what they're dealing with and stuff. But if you look at their lives, their characters, they're they have much more, uh, uh, yeah, they're have much more capacities, I would say, like uh, character-wise. Uh, um, whereas, yeah, Belgian girls are more silent, more like good girls, discreet. Yes, yeah, discreet is a word. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. So, well, the next question about uh, men. <laughs> the men. Oh, the men. I love the men more because, you know what? Really? Because, really? <laughs> no, no. It's because the, the Russian women, they're like a world brand, you know, they're yeah. global. But yeah. Rus- Russian men are so fucking underrated. <laughs> Nobody knows about them. Well, you get it. Underrated. <laughs> It is, because, like, um, the stereotype about the Russian men, and I think it's cu- quite true to some uh, extent, is, like, they're reckless. Uh, uh, that's what they teach us also at school, like, Russian men, they're, you, yeah, you just, kind of you know. <laughs> but when I came here, I actually discovered how cultured and nice Russian men can be, which you don't have in Europe. Like, you're, here, 
every man that you don't know, like for instance, strangers on this, that you meet on the streets, they always open the doors for you. They serve the women. For instance, they help you uh, get out of a tr walk out of a tram uh, or uh, to cross the street. And they don't ask your number afterwards. They just say, have a great day, miss. Like, and then they go. Whereas in Belgium, if a man does that, you know that in like af after that he will come and ask your number and then you know and and that's why you're always like uh no i'm a feminist don't touch me i'll do it ever you know i'll do everything myself i'll pay for my own coffee because afterwards i don't want to have shit on my head like i mean but men here in russia they're not like that it's just like they just serve you because you're a woman and that's really nice and you know with and they accept everything like it's not because you know you accept for instance uh, this person to help you that he wants something back in return or something or it's that's why i'm like the russian men <laughs> they're like yeah they're definitely underrated well the question that uh, uh, comes uh, from the previous one maybe in europe that is the consequence of some feminist movement Mm -hmm. What about that? Uh -huh. and that, that uh, I mean that uh, men are afraid of uh, being helpful to women because they are afraid of being sued for uh -huh. that and so on. Uh -huh true uh, but also why I think women uh, exaggerate uh, like they overreact they don't exaggerate but they overreact why because it's a reaction to something uh, some past actually because women are like I don't know it's like I, I remember it, like men in, in, in Europe and I think also to some extent also in the States they're very pushy like they that's why women are just like from the beginning on like no mm -hmm. and from like you know you just make one step towards a woman like help it women think like help her and women think like okay what does this man want harassment <laughs> exactly <laughs> like i don't know like sex or something you know like very big like whereas the man just wanted to get to know you but you think oh no you know and And there is also a lot of slut shaming, for instance, in Europe going on, in the States as well, probably. I mean, you know it better. But uh, so these are things that, you know, women there have to, you know, they're struggling with. And that's why I think there is this uh, overreactive feminism thing going on, which is to some extent, I, I can like, uh, I, I understand it because I was also like, uh, I know this reality as well, this part of reality. So... Okay, what are your plans about Russia? Mm -hmm. uh, well, so I'm here, uh, I live here for two years now. So I have eight more years to go <laughs> to, to study. Like, I would love to speak uh, in Russian uh, fluently and freely uh, because it's a very interesting language. And it's also a very fun to speak language because you have like these, uh, like just change a couple of letters or like a suffix in a word. This whole word becomes a different, has a different meaning. And sometimes you make like a lot of uh, mistakes. And I think it's really fun when you go back because I, I, when I came, once I came uh, Uh, late to, to a class and I said I opened the door and I said sorry I, I overslept meaning like I my alarm clock I didn't hear it but I said it in Russian and actually I said I'm sorry I, I had sex or something like yeah perespala and I didn't know it and then somebody told it to me like three months later like actually this means that and I'm like oh my god okay but it's very fun that's what I mean like it's very inventive it's very nice and I'm like it's it's a cool thing uh, like it's not like a uh, Dutch or something where you have everything like or German or it's a very innovative creative language and And so I would love to explore more of Russia. I would travel. I would love to travel more uh, also because in two years time you don't see anything like even Moscow. I have to discover uh, more. And uh, so I would love to work here because uh, uh, also the economy is very dynamic and very vibrant. Uh, I've felt like like I feel like in, in Europe they already reached some kind of you know uh, level and so that's why everything is exactly uh, whereas here it's like at any moment everything can happen and it's like very interesting uh, to live in if you're young um, so that's why yeah I would love to stay and uh, read more uh, speak more see more actually okay thank you Olya for that well uh, very uh, you know interesting conversation uh, I'm a master of English language 
I use the word interesting. <laughs> uh, I hope that you will come to St. Petersburg. Well, because it's the city of my own, maybe the most beautiful in Russia. And uh, I'll see you through. Okay, You can leave your comments there. And we'll see again right tomorrow. Yeah. Небольшой постфактум. Мир делится на две категории. Одни пишут, зачем ты ставил субтитры, неужели так сложно было озвучить. Другие пишут, зачем ты озвучивал, зачем ты делал дубляж. Так хотелось послушать английский прекрасного гостя или гости. Дело в том, что конкретно это видео я собирался выложить на другой канал, реанимировать свой старый англоязычный канал, но потом я понял, что у меня просто не хватит потенции вести это все. И данный проект я буду ну, либо интегрировать в Россию чужой взгляд, либо выкладывать его отдельно. Суть заключается в том, что иногда определенные люди пишут, надо разместить английские субтитры, чтобы это увидели там. Там это не увидят. Никогда. Это пишут люди, которые совершенно не понимают, как устроен современный интернет, какое количество контента производится там и насколько им абсолютно неинтересно все то, что происходит здесь. Единственное, с чем, на мой взгляд, можно пробиться туда, это с прекрасными красивыми девушками, которые умеют увязывать слова в логические цепочки и могут представить нашу страну должным образом. То есть через них транслировать положительный, позитивный имидж России. Это я пытался изначально делать на другом канале, но потом у меня просто не хватило на это ни сил, ни времени. Посему, кстати, ну, уже сделано еще два интервью, возможно, сделал еще. Если у вас есть знакомые, прекрасные представительницы слабого пола, которые хорошо говорят по-английски, можете со мной связаться, возможно, мы сделаем интервью. В заключение хочу сказать, что в ближайшее время экскурсии будут проходить только в Петербурге. Там будет рассказ, как из серии Романова без соплей про Кшесинскую Николая Николаевича Младшего, про покушение брата Ленина и Аничка в дворец, про дно Петербурга, которое представляло собой Коломна, где жил Пушкин, Репин и был самый первый КВД России, поскольку там был центр фактически проституции. Про дедушку русской инженерии Бетанкура и Тайны Фонтанки, про масонов и Павла Дурова на Невском проспекте, про князя Цусимского и великого князя Константина Николаевича и его балерин. В общем, про все про это. Это вот в ближайшее время в Петербурге. Все анонсы есть в описании под этим выпуском. Точно так же там есть электронный адрес и адрес сайта моего. Через это можно связываться, если вы хотите поехать в Берлин или Париж с нашими экскурсионными группами. Пишите, отвечу на все вопросы, пришлю программу. Вот на этом все совершенно точно. Теперь пока.